So let's start with the losers. Cutco. Now, when I say loser, I mean financially, spiritually, emotionally, uh, mentally, wisdom, knowledge, experience, all wins. So every single one of my losers, all my failures in the different businesses that I've started and, and failed at financially, I was able to actually pull a lot of success out of it where I, I picked up a lot of sales experience, following up, email, referral, leads, marketing, different communication strategies, speaking strategies, creating content, like all wins. So I don't want to disregard any of that. We're just focusing on financially it's a loss and financially and, and it's a loss because I'm no longer selling or promoting or, or that particular product or service, right? So Cutco is a company I joined back in 2014 that was just strictly selling high-end kitchen cutlery knives. I did make money. I also did not make money, right? I did not continue to make money. I lost interest, right? I learned new things. I got exposed to new opportunities that my attention and, and focus gravitated in a different direction. So Cutco, that was 2014. Let me put the timelines on these so we're clear. So that was 2014 ACN. That was 2015. This is a network marketing, network marketing. So we can say network marketing or if you want to use the term MLM. There's obviously differences, but we're not going to get into like debating. So whichever term you want to use, network marketing, MLM, or direct sales. They're pretty much in, this, in the same family, although many would, agree, would argue that is not the case, and I would agree with them as well. So just for simplicity, network marketing companies, Cutco, ACN, Nerium, and Renatus, as well as Legal Shield and United Financial Freedom. These are all in the family of network marketing companies that either require some money up front, you got to buy the product, you sell a product, you can build a team, you can make different streams of income within the same company. All right? So Nerium, that was like 2015. Invicta is a watch company. So I used to sell watches. This is an Invicta watch, right? It's actually a, a different name, but it's under the Invicta family. So I used to sell a bunch of different watches. Did not do very well at selling watches. Again, learned a lot. So that was 2015 as well. Renatus is a real estate education company that I joined around 2017-ish. And also that I believe I invested about 3K into that program. I think I spent a good 5 to 8K on watches. Nerium, probably a good 3 plus thousand. ACN was 500 plus a monthly fee. So a monthly fee. Cutco was actually, uh, I want to say under 500. I don't remember like I because you can sell knives, make money. They keep a commission, use that money, re reinvest back into your, your business. So that was one of the lowest investment options. ACN was 500 up front and then there's a monthly fee. Nerium bought a big package of product, right? That was like 3000 plus. Invicta was like five to 8000 in, in watches. I had a whole bunch of watches and only sold very few. Renatus was a $3,000 program. It's like a one-time thing, lifetime access. So I still have access to Renatus. That's the cool part, right? If I ever want to go back and learn more, or if the, if the company changes and make some different things, that could be done. Online Trading Academy, right? And, and by the way, you might have heard some of these companies or you might be getting pitched right now and you're wondering if you should move forward with it or not. Don't let my losers be your losers, right? If you have a good feeling about any one of these companies, you want to move forward with it, I would say go and experience, right? Experiment, learn from it, right? And if it ends up being a failure, just look at it as like, okay, that's a financial failure. That's a, uh, you, you lost a couple of funds here, but what did you gain from it? What did you learn? Take what you learn to put into the next opportunity, which could be your next winner, right? So online trading academy that was about a nine thousand or so investment that I actually did with a, a business partner that I worked with. That's a learn how to trade forex options, futures, stocks, all that. Right. This is something I also have lifetime access to. So I have lifetime access, even though I didn't stick with it. Right. I could come back to it at a later time. It just means that, hey, I put nine grand in, I didn't make money. I put three grand in, I did make a little money there, but I didn't continue to pursue it, right? United Financial Freedom. 
I did make some good money in financial freedom. I think I made about 10,000 plus with them and it's only a couple hundred bucks. Like it was not a big upfront cost. So bought their product. I just have some differences with the company, some things I don't like that they're doing, that they're focusing on. I don't think they're focusing on their original mission, which was debt elimination. They, they started rolling in uh, the infinite banking concept and selling life insurance policies using IUL. So they're kind of merging philosophies and there's some overlapping, which I'm like, okay, I get it. But at the same time, you originally were all about helping people eliminate debt. But now you're saying buy this policy and use this policy to pay off your debt. It's going to increase the timeline, of course, but you know, you'll come out net on top. Yeah. An argument can be said about that. What is the likelihood, the success rate of the average American person to comprehend that whole strategy plus debt elimination, plus discipline, plus focus when there's not the coaching that is consistent for the amount of years it's going to take to successfully implement that kind of a strategy. So that's why I started to kind of distance myself a little bit. I'm like, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I feel comfortable promoting this software anymore. At first it was pretty cool because it was competing with velocity banking and I could I can have a software basically, you know, think the way I'm thinking in terms of debt elimination. And I just don't see that being the case any longer. So I consider that a a loss in the books, even though I made money. So I'm profitable with UFF in terms of what I put in and what I got out. Same with Cutco, you know, the amount of money I put in versus what I got out, I netted a profit, right? But I'm just no longer continuing to promote or, or talk about these companies as much as I am with the the winners, which we'll get to next. Finally is Legal Shield. Now, Legal Shield, again, I've made money, just not as much as I was planning or projecting to. And it has the potential to come to the winning side. So I haven't totally given up on Legal Shield, right? To be fully transparent, I own like five, six, seven different Legal Shield products that I personally pay for myself and on the business side, religiously on a monthly basis, I pay for these things. So I have no issue with the product. My only issues are typically on the business side, the network marketing, the MLM kind of vibe that I don't like. There's not a whole lot of room to bring in new ideas and collaborate with people who are in the company. It's It, it can be tough talking to people who are very seasoned in the network marketing philosophy, the MLM philosophy, it's like it's like an end all, be all type of a philosophy. Where if you start talking investing in real estate, personal finance, building credit, like these other strategies and concepts to try to collaborate with someone who's all about network marketing, MLM, it's like there's there's no space for collaboration often, especially when I you know reach out and I'm like. If all we're going to talk about every leadership call, every Super Saturday and Super Sunday and Super Friday and every Friday night and every Monday night, every freaking call is about recruiting, but there's very little product education knowledge. There's like, there's not a whole lot of collaborative, like how do we bring people together that are selling the same product and let's maybe potentially add other services. So I'm just not getting that from within the the company at Legal Shield, and that's cool. That's just not their focus. I'm again, I'm I'm cool with that. Again, I love the product. I got nothing bad to really say about the product. It does what it says it does. It also notifies you and lets you know what it doesn't do, right? So you're not like blindsided. This isn't a get out of jail free card with Legal Shield. A lot of people, I don't know why they comprehend it that way sometimes. It, it, it's not something that is going to cover every single legal matter, right? And that's not the case. It's really about the preliminary, most basic stuff whenever you're dealing with the law, citations, tickets. Um, if you have a, a court issue or a legal lawsuit, they can advise and then refer if they don't do a particular thing. So I, I have a lot of value in that in that sense. So I've made money, invested more money than what I've made. So in that regard, there's a loss there. But that's okay because I'm a customer as well as a pro, like a business owner providing the product to people, clients, that whenever I come across them. So I'm cool with that. No biggie. No biggie. But it does have the potential, the potential to be a winner, right? Because I have content. Every now and then someone buys the product. I get a little commission from that. That's cool. 